Today I'm sharing tips about one of the most crucial aspects of van life, and it has nothing to do with showering or going to the bathroom. I promise. It's about sleep. I'm sharing my best tips to transform a multifunctional space that serves as an office, a kitchen, a living area, into a cozy sanctuary for a good night's rest. So let's dive right in. If you know me from this channel, you know how enthusiastic I can be. I get excited about life on the road and all the little discoveries that I make that I can share with you. But sometimes my mind is so active, I have trouble turning it off and winding down long enough to fall asleep. And I'm not exactly sure what it is about life on the road, but I tend to fall asleep way better than I used to. So I've been trying to pay attention to what I am doing that seems to be helping so that I can share that with you. Tip number one, figure it out first. Wherever you are and whatever you're planning to do, always figure out where you plan to stay for the night. It's a simple thing, but I find that I have far less anxiety when I have that part settled in my brain. You'll wanna have several options just in case your first choice or ideal spot is taken, or if you get there and something just doesn't feel right. This is what I do to look for potential sites. There are a lot of apps out there for finding sites, and iOverlander and Campendium are the ones that I find most useful. You can open the app, and it'll show you the area where you are and there will be choices for a stay. And there are paid stays and non-paid sites and you just zoom in the area where you are and it will pull up the options for you. And if you find an option that you like, you can click on it and it will give you more details. It also shows reviews from people. I usually look for places that seem quiet and a little out of the way so I don't get harassed or don't have many people around. And I look for sites that have good reviews. When I'm entering a new state or an area that I'm not familiar with, I'll usually look for a welcome center and then I'll go in there and I'll ask the people that are at the front desk what their advice is for a place to stay in the area. And they usually are pretty good resources, especially if they are campers or van lifers or they're local to the area. Ideally, you want to get to a place before dark, so start the process early enough so that you can do that. Sometimes it's just not possible, so in that case, I usually resort to my go-to options like a truck stop or a rest area or a Walmart parking lot because those I feel safe in. And then I just go to the site that I was planning on in the morning. Believe me, it's much less creepy than getting there at night. Now let's talk about bed setup. I find that the easier it is for me to set things up, the easier it is for me to relax. Whether I'm planning to stay somewhere for a while or just going to be there overnight, it's good to have a routine that is relatively simple and a setup that is quick and easy. It also helps me to tidy up my space first so that it's more conducive to rest. It's worth it to me to take a few extra minutes to clean up the dishes, fold my clothes, and generally just put everything in its place again. And it has the added benefit of ensuring me that if I need to move quickly in the middle of the night for some reason, I'm ready to go without things falling all over the place. 
After I clean up the space, I usually turn on my van if it is cold outside and heat it up for a little bit while I am changing my clothes and getting my blankets ready for a good night's sleep. I get my hot water bottle out. And of course, I have my pee jar ready just in case nature calls at 3 a.m. I really sleep so much better when my place is cozy and clutter-free. Something else to remember for good sleep is ventilation. I use fans to circulate the air and I usually crack open the window just a little bit to let some fresh air in. Such a beautiful area. My van isn't exactly airtight, and that's actually served me pretty well. I don't tend to get a lot of condensation build up, and I don't know if that has to do with the airflow, and it really doesn't ever get too stuffy in here because whether I like it or not, air is getting in and out. I'm amazed at how much better I sleep with cool, fresh air, as long as it's not freezing. And in the warmer weather, it's nice to have a little bit of airflow with the breeze coming through. Something else that helps is blocking outside light. I invested in these blackout curtains and I made my window coverings. And both of these help to keep out street lights if I'm in a parking lot or something, and also keeps the sunbeams from coming through the window. Although I do like the morning sunbeams coming through my window. I also bought this windshield umbrella and it really just acts like an umbrella, but folds up very tight. It's easy to set up, and I usually do that right when I get to a place so that I have privacy. It's a really simple setup. And then I usually shut these curtains as well so that I have a little extra privacy if I need to at night. And it also helps to insulate just a little bit from the front cab area so that if it's hot, the heat isn't getting through. And if it's cold, the cold isn't getting through so much. The last tip was a little bit hard to do, but it has really made a difference. Turning off electronics. When I'm out in nature, it's easier for my body to adjust to the sun going down as its signal to also start winding down. And lately, rather than just going inside my van and getting on my phone, I try to get all of my last minute emails and work done before the sun goes down so that I am not tempted to look at a screen and get that blue light exposure before bed. And of course, if I'm with friends, we usually sit around the campfire and that also is very soothing and helps to get your mind in a more relaxed state, unless you're dancing around the fire or something. Then I've been listening to podcasts or audiobooks rather than actually reading or watching something on the screen. It's great because I can close my eyes and just listen and not have to use my eyes or strain them in any way. And often I just drift into sleep without even realizing it. If I do choose to watch something, I usually dim the screen really low so that it's not disrupting my brain too much. So there you have it. I hope that these tips give you a wonderful night's sleep wherever you may be. If you enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Sweet dream.